All right. So thank you for joining Marketing Mechanics today. What we're going to be focusing on is talking a little bit more about the post-close marketing process, what you can be doing to drive more leads, more conversations, more opportunities. Eric's, er, Eric, you want to turn off your camera right now? Uh, do, 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 do. Uh, and, uh, you know, one of the, 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 the points that I really want to focus on with our session is how you could drive more repeat and referral business, but most importantly, how you could find new opportunities to generate conversations with listing agents, people that are a part of the transaction that you might not be going after, um, you know, day to day. So let's talk a little bit, you know, starting with, you know, as you're going through a process, as you're going through a loan, this creates a great opportunity for, uh, you know, great opportunity for you to really focus on the experience. And by creating a positive experience for your borrowers, it's going to create the opportunities for more referrals and repeat business. You know, inside of our CRM, we've got post-close campaigns, we've got re-engagement campaigns. So making sure that all of your customers are are assigned to those uh, particular campaign, you know, is going to be important. It's going to help you with you know, your ability to drive more conversations, to be able to drive more, you know, more business as it relates from people that are part of your ecosystem. Uh, but one thing I really want to emphasize and talk through today is I put together a post-close engagement campaign that is specific for listing agents. So I've got a couple of people on the call. Let's make this as something we kind of conversate conversate through and uh you know rob with your business when you're closing a loan i'd love to understand you know how are, are you scheduling post-close calls are you already reaching out to a listing agent like what does your post-close experience look like with your customers okay well for me i've been using my crm for decades so i've got a post-close you know campaign built out where basically first of all we do the first payment follow-up Yep. So the first payment follow-up, we're reaching out by phone generally, sometimes by text if okay. I can't reach them, but, you know, quick mm -hmm. call to say, hey, did you make your first payment okay? Are you in a good position with everything? Do you have any questions, right? And I'm planting seeds on that first payment call for what our relationship's going to be with the next piece, which is the annual reviews and the refinancing mm -hmm. and all that. So the next piece is a six month review. So that's when I tell them, hey, at the six month mark, we're gonna be checking in to make sure you're in the best loan, see where the rates are. Maybe they're better, maybe they're worse, maybe your needs have changed, right? So the first opportunity to refinance or look at those options is gonna be at the six month mark, which is usually around when they've made, or it's around eight months after they buy the house when they've made six payments. And we do that to make sure we don't get with an EPO, right? Got to make sure. So I'm planting the seed to make sure they don't refi before that. Because I'm saying, hey, if you see something, if you hear something about rates or mortgages, reach out to me. Let yeah. me be your advisor with that. Because you're going to get solicitors and people reaching out to you. But that doesn't mean necessarily it's a good fit. So if it's not refi at six months or six payments, then we're going to reach out back again and do your annual review, right? One year from now, one year from when you buy that property or we do your loan, we're going to be getting back in touch to do your annual review. And then from there, we're going to be talking at least a couple times a year, pretty much forever. And I yeah. set that up and that's my post close. And along with every one of those phone or text touches, I have automated emails going out a few days before to tell them, hey, it's time. Like, it's time for your check in. We're going to be reaching out in the meantime. Let me know if you have any questions or if there is a specific time that you want to schedule. And I give them my Calendly link and all that stuff. And that is really nice and proactive because some people I can't get on the phone ever. Yeah. And they'll schedule in with the Calendly for like a holiday or some time yeah. that they normally wouldn't. So, I mean, that's my post close uh, rigmarole, I guess. That's my campaign. And it works because, like, most of my business is repeat. I love that. Do you have any touches in your post close campaign that you know, possibly talk about, you know, hey, you're considering do it, you know, like uh, remodels, improvements around the home, you know, it might be time to consider a HELOC. Are you plugging a HELOC at all? 
I mean, my post close emails are very generic in yeah. nature, more so that, hey, it's time for your annual checkup, like a doctor would send you. We're yeah. not going to go into the diagnosis, but it's yeah. more, hey, it's time for us to look at this. Even if your situation hasn't changed, there might be things in the market that mm -hmm. are going to benefit you, right? So yeah. that's really what I'm plugging. I should do more customized, but I've been using this for decades. And if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But I do need to weave in some of the stuff you're talking about i do a lot of helocs from those but it's based on recommending when we're talking and we look and go well there's not a refi opportunity you've got a five percent or a four percent or maybe from years ago a three or a two so it's like no that refi may not make sense but do you have any need for the equity in your home right now we're talking yeah. through that and when the answer is yes or it's like yeah you know what in six months i actually want to do an addition for this or that okay let's get that position now let's yeah. open that jar of worms you know on the heloc now so i do a ton of helocs just in the last week i've done two helocs using our uh, five-day heloc through figure in the loan store and it was all based on those you know those follow-ups those post-close follow-ups at the six month mark for one client and at the two-year mark for another and they both were moving forward with a heloc already approved and in line for closing so it works do it yeah. you got to implement i love that and i would uh you know, Rob, if you send me, send me an email, I'll give you some scripts from like, uh, our post close campaigns. Maybe you can copy, paste, plug in yes. experiment and just help kind of streamline getting it out there. What, uh, a lot of what you hit on there, the annual mortgage review, the advisor for life, the first payment, like these are all value driven things. You're not selling anything. The other thing that I like touching on is some, you know, there's some minor touches where it's like, you know, as you're getting settled in your home, you're probably noticing some DIY stuff. You know, here are some, like, there's a YouTube video that has like 25 DIY hacks that are like, save some money, try it yourself before you have to bring in a pro, something you can consider where it's like, you're, you're thinking about their best interest. So I'll share a version of that with you. That's great. And, um, you can just plug and play into your environment. And, and really the theme for everyone on this call is, you know, we want to think, and what we know yeah, to Rob's point is repeat referral business are always going to close at the highest level. So how do we engage these customers with value? One thing you got to keep in mind is no one cares about a monthly dish recipe that's sent out of the CRM. They care about what is unique and relevant to their individual position. You have to position yourself as a mortgage advisor for life. So when you're communicating with your customers before, during, and after the transaction, it's really about re reassuring them that, hey, you know, once your loan is closed, your job has really just begun. You're going to be monitoring their mortgage. You're going to be looking for opportunities to improve. And when you have this sort of messaging within your post-close campaigns, you develop that rapport. So these, you know, your deals aren't getting picked off by online lenders or other people, you know, who are trying to snatch those refi business. So, uh, the more that you're community one more thing zach yeah this is probably one of the biggest ones that i didn't start doing until maybe eight years seven eight years ago i started calling every client on their birthday and yeah. it's because i was at a seminar and one the top lo there many many decades in the business hundreds of loans a year that's his entire marketing plan he just calls people on their birthday he doesn't talk about mortgages at all he just calls them on their birthday to create that relationship so i started doing that and i get several transactions a year from the birthday call and if they don't answer the call i'm sending a text as well and i have an automated email so i'm hitting them from all areas and like that's something so easy and you can do that with prospects or listing agents or other people that you're trying to network with but for me i've just put it with my past clients people that actually close business and it's kept me in touch with clients to the point where i have a client i did a home equity loan two weeks ago and i did their original mortgage in 2009 OK, nice. and I had barely talked to them. We lost touch. It was early in my career. Right. I did their loan because I called them on their birthday. I was like, hey, man, it's been a while, but I screwed up. I'm here now for you. He had done a couple other loans with Rocket Mortgage. But now that I was there for him, I'm the one he reached out to and he needed that home equity loan. So don't discount the birthday call. I love that. You know, one thing I've seen, um, you know, other mortgage professionals do as it relates to birthday is doing a slide broadcast, like a pre-recorded voicemail that goes out to your customers on that date. And you can record the voicemail, voicemail where it's a little bit more generic. Maybe there's like a motivational quote, something that you include in it. Um, I know that to your point, Rob, like those, that makes people feel special. 
You know, it's like, I, I remember I had a guy that, uh, you know, my lender, like that's where I got this live broadcast voicemail idea from when I did my, I bought my first home six years ago. And I used to tell people on my birthday, you know, I get a birthday wish from my mom, my wife and my lender, you know, and it's like mm -hmm. th that sort of mindset. It, it really does. It builds rapport. That is a great idea. Uh, and it's something we all should really consider. You know, one of the things you guys can look at too on Facebook, it tells you every day whose birthday it is. So if these are realtors, if these are customers, you know, pick up the phone and calling them, sending them a video. That's another thing I've seen people do on me like Messenger on Facebook is you go on to Facebook, you see whose birthday it is, you know, record a quick message, just make it part of your process. You're doing it, you know, every day. That'll take you two, three minutes, uh, you know, to go through your list of people and, and, you know, wishing them a happy birthday. So that's something that is incredibly effective. And Rob, really appreciate the strategies that you're sharing there. All right. Sure. So the next thing I want to talk about is agents. So listing agents, you're going through a transaction. You are creating a great experience for your borrower. Uh, but you're also, you know, there's agents on the other side of the deal. So how are you engaging those agents? How do you generate conversations with them? How do you stay in front of these individuals? How do you simplify the process of, of you know, communication? One of the things that I like doing, um, and if you're using Arrive, uh, you know, there's in-process updates that can go out on your files. So updating the client based on where the loan status is, making sure that the listing agent is tied into that transaction. You want the listing agent to see how you're communicating. Uh, and it's not just to the borrower, but it's them, you know, it's updating them on the, the transaction. Your loan is now in underwriting. Here's what you can expect. You know, your loan has been conditionally approved uh, or the loan on the property has been conditionally approved. Uh, and if you have those in process flows in place, this allows you to um, lean into that experience. And what I mean by that is I have dropped, and there's a couple of people that have joined since, um, you know, since I, I started this, but if you take a look at this listing agent campaign, you know, what we're trying to do here is we're trying to, and let me share my screen. All right. So our objective with this campaign is saying, Hey, thanks again. It was a pleasure working with you on this transaction. Um, you know, and you're, what you're doing is you're kind of toting their ego. You're saying, Hey, you know, your professionalism was through the roof. Your dedication was amazing. You know, I really appreciate the ability that we had to be able to work together. Uh, but I lean into this point, the kind experience, you know, it's always priority number one to agents, being able to bring more business back to them, creating a good experience, uh, you know, is something we want to make sure is paramount. And, and the way that I'm leaning into this message is, you know, prior to number one, you know, is our client experience. You got to look under the hood of how we manage our client experience. I'd love to schedule some time to learn more about your business. You know, we're passionate about helping our strategic partners elevate their success. Um, it could be some valuable opportunities for us to collaborate, you know, and we're not going to them with, hey, my handout, give me a deal. It's like, I want to learn about your business, share some of the things I'm doing to help elevate my partnerships. Uh, and we're using, you know, we're using this uh, uh, content, we're using this content, both text and email, to be able to nurture these people to shake loose meetings. Uh, these listing agents, they have familiarity with your name because you've been communicating with them, you know, seeing your name throughout this transaction. So that creates an opportunity to generate a meeting with a referral partner. Um, and we want to be able to leverage this automation. Obviously, you know, you have the ability to go in and make adjustments, change so it's in your tone. But, you know, what I'm, I'm hoping to achieve here is more meetings. We want to generate more meetings with lit agents on the other side, uh, you know, of these transactions so that we can ultimately shake loose more business uh, and more strategic partners. Um, you know, and, and it's, a, you know, it's a, uh, just two core components to this campaign is, you know, one, making sure that you have communication going out through the transaction, whether that's automated or manual, and then triggering this post-close engagement campaign to the seller's agent where you're toting their ego, you're using some text and saying, hey, I want to share some things that I can do to help you grow and help you generate more, more business. Um, does anyone have any questions on this post-close campaign, what they need to be doing, how they could leverage it, you know, what that looks like? Patrick, I'd be curious, you know, how are you currently going after listing agents? Do you have strategies in place with what you're doing today? No, but that's why I'm on this call. 
Well, good. I'm glad. Yeah. I hadn't seen you in a minute, so I was like, we got Patrick back. <laughs> yeah, this is something that, is, you know, you really have, for me, I, I, I love listening to the last LO speaking as far as what he does, because those are some great ideas. A lot of times we get so clogged up with other things that we're doing, we miss those simple things, like as, as a simple phone call or something like that. So I need to start doing things. I'm just now starting getting some, some sales going on, some purchases going on, so this falls right in line to what I need to implement in my plan. Uh, I was going to ask you, though, in, in, when you were talking about doing a video call, are you able to do video calls on um, Go High Level and record a video call that goes out? Are so video you can re are you talking about recording your your call? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of, well, I was like talking a, about if you could to record a video, right, and send it out to the people. Yep. Is there a way of doing that other than doing with, um, I know you could do it with um, those platforms. Is there other ways yeah. to do that as well? Yeah, so inside of the automations tab, you can create a campaign and upload a video file into that, or you can share like a YouTube link. The key is if you share a video file and you're emailing it out to a bunch of email address, like like a bulk email, um, your, your email more than likely will be caught in spam because of the file size. So what I would recommend doing is creating a landing page inside high level, parking that video on the landing page, and linking your email to that video. If you really wanna go the extra mile, take a picture of your thumbnail from that video and put the link to the video in that thumbnail in the email so that people click on it and it's intuitive that they're gonna be watching a video. Uh, that's gonna kind of help you on both sides. It's gonna, you know, a cl your click through rate will be higher and also you're more likely to be delivered because you're not sharing that video file. Like wait, the tools you're talking about, like uh, Bomb Bomb, that's a compression tool. And all it does is compress your video size, you know, to go over and, and it's essentially a landing page where it's, it's being shared. Okay, good, thank you. All right, awesome. Um, you know, a couple other things that I wanna cover, as I mentioned, today's a short workshop, we only got 30 minutes. Uh, so the next, you know, next part I wanna go through, uh, you know, talking a little bit, you know, request for reviews real quick. So, you know, at post close, you know, what I've always found to be the most effective time to ask for the request for review is right before the loan is closed. You give a loan update and you're like, hey, conditionally closed, your loan's getting, you know, you're, you're right, you're in the red zone, you know, five yards out, ready to close. When you ask for it, um, you know, right at the tail end of the transaction, you know your open rate, your engagement rate with communication you send out is more likely to be received because customers feel it's still part of their loan process. One of the things that we have built inside of EMC CRM is a happy path and a sad path review campaign, meaning you could use this to send to your customers where it's essentially a thumbs up or thumbs down. It's like rate your experience, you know, working with Patrick. Uh, you know, they give you a thumbs up and it then prompts them to write that review on your Google My Business page or Zillow, whatever channel you want your reviews going to. If they give you a thumbs down, it takes them to a thank you page where we like to put a video from the loan officer saying, hey, we really value your feedback. We want to make sure we're improving our process. If you could leave any notes or feedback you have in a, you know, essentially a form below um, to gather that information. So that way you're, you know, you're taking their feedback, you're able to implement it into your business. Uh, but uh, you know, that's that's going to be something, you know, in terms of how do you maximize reviews? How can you leverage those reviews for social proofs? So the more reviews you generate, you know, sharing those on your social media channels. What I like to do is focus on niche types of products. Maybe you're working with a veteran, a self-employed bar where you're, you're, you know, first time home buyer. You know, it was a difficult transaction. When you use those sorts of, uh, um, you know, uh, testimonials where someone's speaking to the experience, when they see that social proof, that message will resonate with an audience that, you know, might have thought, hey, I'm not going to be able to take action as a self-employed bar or, or, you know, a veteran. I didn't know that I can get 100%, you know, I can use 100% down on my, uh, you know, as a, as a VA, you know, as part of my VA benefits, uh, you know, so that's something you really, you know, you want to consider. Uh, the other thing, so Rob talked a little bit about like six months or a year after, you know, closing. One of the things that I like recommending, especially around that six month time, you know, when it comes the ability to, uh, you know, when it's that time to, you know, you can really assess if a refinance makes sense. Uh, I like using a video where you're saying, uh, you know, hey, as part of my job, you know, I'm monitoring and managing your mortgage. It might even make sense to maybe send this out in month five, you know, before 
slightly before they have the potential, you know, to, um, you know, to potentially refi with you just so you're starting that, you know, conversation, getting in front of them. Uh, but specifically what you're trying to reinforce is the relationship, you know, and how you're an advisor, you're monitoring their mortgage, you know, helping uh, stay consistent, stay in front of them. Uh, and, and uh, you know, ultimately don't, don't ever forget, you got to ask for referrals. So in your videos and your emails, you know, those nurture campaigns, you know, remind people that your business thrives off referrals, it grows off referrals, it wouldn't be where it's at today without those sorts of referrals. Uh, another piece of advice I have for everyone that the Thanksgiving holidays are coming up, it's a great time, you know, to be thankful for where you're at with your business. What I'd recommend everyone on this call doing is do a gratitude video and post this right around Thanksgiving, you know, on Thanksgiving, the day after Thanksgiving, and say, you know, I just have so much to be thankful for this year. My business would not be where it's at without the support of each and every one of you. You know, your referrals, trust in my business has really helped me grow. And I just can't thank you guys enough. If anyone you know is looking to buy, you know, buy a home, I'd love the opportunity to help them with their home finance needs. You know, do some sort of gratitude video because it's going to give you the ability to be in front of our audience, the people you want to see. And you're not selling anything. You're saying, hey, thank you. I'm appreciative of, you know, of what you've done for my business and, and what you'll see through that is more conversations, you know, because you're going to get people that comment that like, you know, it's that thankful time of year. Uh, and ultimately I think you'll, you'll be able to shake loose some more business there. Um, you know, another thing, uh, we want to talk about, so we talked, you know, review, social proof, you know, post-close videos. Uh, I love that birthday message that that Rob shared, you know, incorporating birthdays into, uh, you know, the birthday outreach. I would recommend, you know, if you're able to go to, go to the LOS, run an export of all your closed loans, include that borrower birthday information in it. And then inside of high level, you can set a workflow that triggers based on your contact's birthday. That's when the loan, the lead will fire. Uh, and just record a voicemail, do a pre-recorded voicemail that goes out, you know, goes out to them on this, you know, on the day of their birthday. Um, it's an easy set it and forget it type of campaign. Um, you know, and Jonathan, every Tuesday during our high level training sessions, CRM training sessions can walk you through how to do that. But, uh, that'd be a great lift in terms of engagement with your audience. All right. Let's keep things going here. All right. The next thing that I wanted to talk a little bit about is, uh, just retargeting your database, you know, remarketing your database. Uh, one of the things that we are doing more of in terms of using past customer databases to run lookalike audiences, uh, you know, if you're looking to generate some cash out refi or some purchase leads, being able to leverage, uh, you know, those audiences to, 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 you know, stay in front of them. Um, you know, using Rob as an example, he's got some remarketing ads that are targeting his agents, his past customers. You know, we found this to be effective because it's really about putting his face in front of the people that know, like, and trust him. You know, using that as part of his reputation strategy, his referral strategy. Um, that's something that that's, you know, a bit effective. Rob, I'm curious, do you hear from customers at all of them seeing your ads or what does that look like for you? Um, I wouldn't say I hear that they're seeing my ads, but I just know they are because I'm, you know, get more referrals. I'll get calls out of the blue from people. Um, face, I get messages on Facebook, you know, I'm, I'm doing stuff on there. So I found it to be the most cost effective marketing available because it is so inexpensive compared to other ways to generate loans. Yeah. So I don't know my statistics. You probably know them better than I do because your company is running the show on that. Yeah. But um, I've absolutely, I've been doing it. I'm going to say like maybe two to two and a half years now. It's been part of my strategy. And I would definitely say it's enhanced the referrals, the past clients, because I'm running these ads to realtors that maybe I've done one transaction with, you know, and then all of a sudden I'm getting referrals from that agent, like a few weeks later, I know yeah. that this is part of that. So yeah. I recommend it, but I know you need a certain amount of data to do it. I think I have a few thousand records maybe now. Yeah. You know, the more data, the better, you know, it's really, once you kind of get into a couple hundred, you could start to create an impact with the remarketing. Uh, the more you have on social, it's, you know, it's going to be able to allow you to find that audience. So that's effective. 
Uh, you know, the big point that I just really want to emphasize, you know, as it relates to retargeting Facebook lead generation with your database is that people that already know, like, and trust you are going to be the most likely to engage with your content. You know, the, the people that you're trying to stay in front of. So think of like, you know, uh, these remarketing ads is really a 21st century uh, shopping cart ad. You're following people around, you know, you're, you're staying in front of them. Um, you know, so my, my message with this point is really, if you're looking to generate more leads and you want to grow your influence, you want to be 15 mile famous, you know, that local lender, that list of customers, you know, you need to look at those individuals as your sales reps. The more that you're in front of them, the more that you educate, the more that you talk about the market, you're that that certified expert. That's how these people are going to remember you. That's how they're going to refer you. You know, again, we're heading into the holiday season. What do people do during the holidays? They get together with family. They talk about where they're at in life, what they're looking to do, goals, dreams, visions. You want these people that are part of your sphere to be thinking about your name when they're sitting at the Thanksgiving dinner table and their brother's like, I want to buy a home. I want to connect you with Rob. Rob's done five of my loans, you know, and that's what I'm trying to get across with these ads and these campaigns is if you're looking to generate more conversations with the sphere of influence, with your database, you know, all you need is an email address. You have an email address for that customer. We can create an audience and find them online to be able to push your information in front of them. Uh, you know, and, and so it's really just the emphasis for today um, you know, as I mentioned, shorter call, 30 minutes, we're going to wrap up here in two. Uh, but, you know, leverage your data, go to your LOS, pull an export of all the clients you've, you've closed, you know, whether that's five or 5,000, like that is a foundational place for you to start. The mindset that you're thinking of with these people is how do you generate, I mean, how do you stay in front of them? To generate more conversations, remarketing is an effective strategy. Being on your post-close campaign is an effective strategy. Friend requesting all of them on social media to your personal page is an effective strategy so that they see you. Um, I, you know, the message that I want to leave everyone here with today is, you know, effective remarketing is about frequency of being seen. So on social, on emails, the more that they see you, the more likely these people will be to engage with you. And that's where referrals and repeat business will come from. That's where from a lead generation side, more leads will come from. Uh, and that's really what I want to leave you guys with today. So uh, take advantage of that post close campaign, go run an export. So your action item, everyone's action item for today is go run an export out of your LOS, pull all of the listing agents that you have inside of the LOS, drop them on this post close listing engagement campaign knowing that you might have to adjust some of the copy because you're going it's going to be a broader campaign speaking to a wider audience but this is where i want you guys to start uh, next week when we meet we're going to we'll dive a little bit deeper into our build out around facebook ads and what you could do with these lookalike audiences uh, but again Every Tuesday is our CRM training session. Every Thursday is marketing mechanics. If there's anything you guys need, please don't hesitate to reach out. Again, I really value your time. And yeah, Patrick. Ask a question. How, do we have a time with you to set up the post, the whole remarketing campaign that you that your agency would do? Yeah, I just dropped you my Calendly link. Go in there and grab a time. Okay, cool. Thank you. Awesome, guys. I appreciate everyone. Oh, hey, Ferdinand. Let me give you my uh, Calendly link, if you wouldn't mind. Just grab grab time on that, and then you and I can meet up tomorrow or the next or on Monday. I'm sorry, what did you say again? I said just take a look at my calendar link. I just dropped in the message. Uh, that is uh, just grab grab some time on my calendar, and I can help go through all these these questions that you have. Okay, got it. Okay, cool. Awesome. See you guys.